Good morning, Wairarapa. This is Anthony Uproar from Age Concern, Aging with Attitude, and our first session of the year. So it's going to be an exciting year. I think. What about you, Susie? Um, yeah, happy new year, to everyone out there listening today. Uh, a little bit late, but better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right there. You're right there. Did you do much over the holiday period? Yes, over the holiday period. Um, the weather wasn't very kind to us, um, so didn't do a lot outside, but um, spent a lot of time with family uh, and friends. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Typical um, Christmas. Absolutely. Family and friends. Mm -hmm. So, pity it wasn't very. Um, warm over here or was raining from what I heard I was away over in Perth visiting my son lucky lucky I know I know <laughs> I know 21 days over there 19 of them temperature over 30 degrees and the ones the cold days were about 25 to 27 degrees the cold days wow yeah but the interesting thing was for me anyway was that um you could stay at the sun all day even at 38 you could stay at the all day and not get burnt Wow. But yesterday, 24 degrees, and I could feel myself burning mm. after, after 15 minutes. Yes, our sun is, is really, really um, penetrating, I would call it. I was working um, sort of under the eaves of trees and stuff like that yesterday, but and it was I got out at 8 o'clock in the morning because I knew it was going to be a bit warmer, but um, the cloud was very, um, I was very thankful for. But uh, later on, it's the sun came out, and I was like, Oh my goodness, please go away, please go away. It was just too hot. And as you say, it feels like it is burning straight away. Yeah, it mm. was crazy for me. As I said, I could stay at the sun for a long time, four hours uh, over in Aussie, over in Perth, at 38 degrees, and have a wonderful time. Mm. Yeah. I had to run inside and hide under the um, in the shade. It's <laughs> crazy. But with saying that, um, just remember this, the weather is meant to well our hottest periods in February, and so remember um, for everyone, slip, slop, wrap, and cover up. Okay, don't forget that. And also, uh, if you need to, go, if you have to find some moles, go to the doctor and get a mole map done. Mm. Yeah, just to be on the safe side. You know, it can make me nothing, but you know, better than safe, then sorry. That's what I think you need. Absolutely. I think, too, um, remembering to drink plenty of water as well, because, um, as I said, I was outside most of the weekend, and I'd come in and, ha you know, have a big glass of water, and I think even last night when I sat down, I was still, you know, I was still a little bit dehydrated, so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely important to keep up your water intake because that's what sort of keeps you going, keeps your body um, mobile, really. Yep, I like what you said in terms of hydration or rehydration. Uh, and just a little plug here, guys. Um, alcohol doesn't rehydrate you. <laughs> <laughs> it dehydrates you. Okay, so, uh, yeah, water's the better one. <laughs> so if you're going to spend time outside, uh, remember, have a sip bottle. Uh, with you and mm. just take sips throughout the day drinks throughout the day not just one at the uh, middle or end you know, have it during the day so that your body stays mm. hydrated because they reckon that um, when you've got to the stage where you're actually thirsty you've already passed that uh, dehydration period uh, right. and, and I think as we get older we probably don't identify that uh, very easily so it's really important I think that it's great because if you drink lots of water it pushes out all my new wrinkles <laughs> <laughs> So it's a, it's a cheap a cheap way of keeping me looking fresh. Okay, so having, instead of having Botox, you reckon? <laughs> yeah. <a> water. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think you can actually drink too much water, but yeah, some people say that it flushes out all of your, um, you know, all of your nutrients and things like that. But I think we get to the stage where we don't feel like water, and, and then we, our body doesn't really need it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But remember to, um, as I said. Rehydrate, slip, slop, slap, wrap, um, because our sun is very, as Susan said, uh, penetrating. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because even the sunscreens, I think the uh, idea of your sunscreen is if it's a 15, SPF 15, it only lasts for 15 minutes. Is that correct? I'm not sure about that, but yeah. um, it, check so, it out. Yeah, it definitely, um, yeah, you can be out in the sun for 15 minutes and get burnt. Yep. 
So Absolutely. really important. Get it on before you go outside during the day. Yeah, and the other part of that too is to remember that um, put sunscreen on throughout the day. Mm. Okay, not because you just put it on once in the morning. No, put it on throughout the day. Best thing to do: go to your chemist, your local chemist, uh, and ask them. You mm. know what's good for us here. What's good for me, and they'll give you some good ideas and some good advice so that you can stay um, not crisp. Yeah. <laughs> but um, warm. Yes. Yeah, and then you can enjoy yourself outside. Mm -hmm. I have been sunburnt once or twice, I think, and it hurt. Mm. So it wasn't a pleasant thing. I think it's a pleasant experience. I think it's a really good idea to take a little umbrella um, if you're going anywhere. Okay. Just so you've got a little bit of shade as well. We'll change that word umbrella to parasol. Ah, oh, parasol. <laughs> I do have a parasol, but it's pink with frilly bits on the edges, and I thought, oh, you've got to have the right place to, to have that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so yeah, if you're going out anywhere to the beach, uh, mm. cover shade is good. Mm. Take your own. Yeah. And um, I'm sure that you can uh, – there's some gazebos out now, which quite a cheap, mm. or little tents that you can put up yeah. uh, for shade, especially for if you're going to the beach with your tamariki mukupuna. Mm. So, uh, yeah, peoples – Keep yourself safe and the whānau safe. Mm, we are talking about, you know, presuming that it's going to be sunny <laughs> at some stage. <laughs> well, it is summertime, and, and so I can only assume that it's going to be great. <laughs> well, I'm, well uh, I'm optimistic about um, mm. going into the future. Yep. Mind you, in saying that, uh, for some, the rain has been great because um, the farmers haven't had to um, irrigate as much as they would normally have mm. and also um, those who are on tank water their tanks are I'm assuming are pretty full at the moment mm. yeah I actually my sister's out at Riversdale and she got um, that so they had so much water last week that, um, that she's lost a whole gully um, oh. um, area that you know the water's just like come from the top and just washed everything Roded it away. yeah it's um, a little bit of a worry can be. In the wider upper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And shout out to our whānau up in the north, um, Coromandel, Gis Gisborne. Mm -hmm. you know, and they've been suffering a bit because of the um, cyclones that was going through and that hit that area. So shout out to you and we hope that you are, are safe and that your property is safe and that uh, a lot of people, should you need help, are actually helping you out. Absolutely. So shout out to them also. I just want to also shout out to um, Gordon Toy. So this ponamu here, oh, this, well, it isn't a ponamu. It's made out of onua. And ah. Yeah, the name of this uh, piece here is ukaipo. Okay. And so ukaipo means um, nurturing. Okay, nurturing. So I got this for my birthday, guys. This, I My birthday celebration was on Sunday yesterday. And... Um, the House of Natives. Uh, this is where this came from, this piece. Where's that? Uh, this is in Mapua. Oh. Yes, yeah, so um, Gordon... Favourite spot. That's my favourite <laughs> spot. Yes, it is. And Gordon Toy, he's a carver as well as a tattooist. There is a Facebook page that he has, and you can see his work on that Facebook page. And oh. um, it's... When I saw it, I just was thought to myself, I'm so blessed. Um, Gordon and I have had conversations in the past. Here's a Fanonga, and so this piece was made for me, uh, which is, makes it even more special. Mm -hmm. So just going buying a piece, and so he carved it with myself and mine. The carving, um, the way that he carved it was um, tuna roa. Uh, now tuna roa is a carving style of ngāpuhi. And so my kuya, my, my nan, she comes from Ngāpui in up in uh, Tahike Waima, up that way, up the Hokianga. And so um, that's the style that he carved it in. So it's quite special to me. But I just want to shout out to him. Those who, have, who have, can see it, if you want something like this, mm -hmm. um, go into his Facebook page. Or if you're thinking about uh, getting a, a, a moko, a tattoo, mm -hmm. uh, check it out. He's amazing absolutely amazing so this carving is the nurturer did you say yeah it's nurturing ukaipo so u, u means breast <laughs> kai is food and poor is in the night so um the place where you feed you know at, at the breast of your mother uh, so that's what it means a safe place for you 
Mm, I, I like the way he's holding on to his tummy. Yeah, well, yeah, he's holding my tummy in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but his name is, as I said, is Ukaipo. It's made out of um, Oniwa. Oniwa is uh, sandstone, grey uh, mm. wacky. I've got some at home. Ah, nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wear mine next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> It's amazing because it's very similar to Greenstone. It, it does. It's almost got like a 3D sort of look around it. It's um, an amazing colour. Yeah, and oh, here, I'll show you. I'll hand it to you. Oh, he's got um, yeah. power as well. So there's the patterns inside the stone as well. It looks like all 5 5 patterns in there. Um, but that's the, the grain oh, of the wow. stone. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. I love the um, power shell and the eyes. Yes. Very cool. So again, that's... Quite heavy. <laughs> it's sort of like a exercise when you're walking around today. That's oh, for strengthening my neck. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> it is. My granddaughter was funny. Um, yesterday she said to me, um, Coco, can I wear this? Can I try this on? <clears throat> and I said, sure, bub. And so I gave it to her. And she said, Coco, thank you, because I can have that after, eh? <laughs> <laughs> My granddaughter's four. <laughs> so she's, she sort of claimed it. And wow. Which was interesting, because the other one that I've got made out of um, a, the bill of a swordfish, um, my other granddaughter claimed that one. <laughs> so... Oh. So, are they expecting that you're not going to last very long or something? Oh, no, when I, when I, when I, when I pass away, that yep. can go to them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's all good. And so, yeah, yeah. You anyway, know, getting back to our, yes. uh, talking about a Facebook page. Hey guys, December last year, we at Age Concern, we launched our Facebook page. Thanks to Lindsay. Um, our visiting service coordinator. Our website. Our website, yeah. It wasn't our Facebook page. Sorry, guys. I think we do have a Facebook page as well. Yeah. Lindsay's looking at it. Yep. Well, Lindsay is looking at it, but our web, web page. And if you want to check it out, it's on uh, Age Concern Y. That's A G E C O R N. <laughs> Good spelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. W A I. Yep. Dot org dot NZ. Mm. And so check it out. It's we're really excited about that page. On that page is there's the home page, and then there's um, some tabs about uh, about us, uh, our service, which we'll go through in this session to remind you what our services are, uh, what we're doing um, in terms of the events that are coming up, membership news, uh, community services, and volunteers. And just a plug for volunteers because we do need some more volunteers. Um, to help us run, especially our visiting program, um, because we had a bit of a, a hold at the moment with our visiting service, our, because we do not have enough volunteers. We've come to capacity with that. So um, things are on hold at the moment because we haven't got enough volunteers. So if you've got some time on your hands and you'd like to spend some time with uh, other older people who are feeling isolated and who, who aren't able to get out, and who would like that um, yeah, socialisation, I guess, on a one-to-one, -one, which is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give our officer a call. That's 06-377-0066. Mm, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think there for a while. <laughs> but yeah, 6 And now it's for Lindsay Parks. And um, there is a process that you go through as a volunteer uh, because we have to police vet you and also uh, we like to match our volunteers with the people that uh, would like to have visitors. Mm -hmm. visiting yeah, Lindsay does an amazing job. So she gets referrals um, for people that would would benefit from a visitor, and then she matches them up. It's a bit like a yeah a matching system. Obviously, uh, these people that are requiring some support would have things that they like doing best or um, interests and things like that. So she, Lindsay tries to match them up with people that um, have the same sort of interests and, you know, it's, it's an hour once a week, I think, and you are just having conversations, which is great, or playing, you know, a card game or a chess or something like that, or looking at photos or... Mm, or talking about whatever. things that interest you both. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. yeah. What it isn't, though, is someone to go and do your shopping for you. Yes. 
or someone to go do your house with. It isn't that. No. Yeah. It's all about making friends. Yeah. And talking about the interests that you have. Mm. Yeah. And some of the uh, people that we have in our service in terms of clients for the visiting service, they have gone on to make really good friends and have continued that friendship after um, the service has stopped. Yeah, and so that's that's really cool. And it doesn't mean to say that you have to stay at your place, where they, but they do come to your place. Mm. Um, you could go out for coffee or something like that. Yeah, so it's not only just staying at your home. It could develop into something more. Absolutely. So, um, as I said, our visiting service, as we said, it's an... Um, befriending services matches uh, older people with like-minded people so if you want to be a part of that if you're if you know of someone who is lonely or, or if you are lonely yourself and would like to um, have someone come and visit you please call our office again that's 06 377 0066 <laughs> <Six. laughs> right so we have that visiting service uh, at the there's another service that is very, very similar, um, and that's called our Buddy Up service. That Rachel runs. Which, Rachel Ingham. Yeah, yeah so yeah. she's been running that for almost a year or getting it organised for a long period of time, and uh, she is uh, there if you want to start or would like to socialise with a group of people, again, with the same sort of interests in mind, um, and you're finding it a little bit hard as we get older, I think, uh, people, our friends move out of the area or something like that, and, and we, you know, quite often find that we're a little bit isolated and need some, you know, socialisation. I, I know some people like being at home, but most of us like to get out and meet people and do things. It sort of keeps us moving, I think, to uh, to be able to socialise with people. So those groups are. Um, you know, like people with like interests. Rachel will, will work out whether there's already a group running, so maybe you want to um, play a certain game of cards, like more even Mahjong or something like that. There's a, a local group. Um, she might be able to just uh, connect you up with that local group. Mm. Um, or if it's um, something that no one else has got running already, she will uh, get people that um, have the same interest and maybe arrange to meet up and organise, you know, weekly sessions where you're doing something together, which is fantastic. I love the way she um, had Pavlo over in the park, I think it was on... Pavlo in the park? Yeah, Pavlo over in the park on Christmas oh, Day. I thought, cool. wow, what a cool idea, because I made a Pavlo over at Christmas time and it didn't really work out that great. I think I still have it at home, um, because I, I can't bring myself to chucking it out, but I think... <laughs> I think it's about three weeks old now, so I think I need to let it go and pop it out for the birdies. But um, I thought that was a fabulous thing for people that might have, you know, on Christmas Day, um, you know, you might go to one thing and then have the afternoon to yourself or something, and that was a really great opportunity for people to meet outside and um, share some pavlova. That's a, uh, that sounds queer, but awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Pablo in the park, okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, as um, Susan said, if there are existing groups, it's not about age concern uh, remaking the wheel. Mm. No, we'll have a look at the groups that are around. If we can match you to or find a group for you that already exists, we'll introduce you to that group mm. uh, so that you can. If there isn't a group, then uh, we can form a group. And like-minded people. Yeah, and I guess I guess um, the end result of that is that um, Rachel introduces you to your group and um, hangs out with you for a few weeks and see and to see how you're going, and then possibly pulls back so that those people that are involved actually do all the organising because it's uh, you know about those participants to actually um, yeah do those sorts of things. Well, what I like about what you just said, Susan, is that um, it's not about uh, um, people being dependent on us, yeah. but being uh, independent or mm. interdependent. Mm. Aging with attitude. Aging, aging with, yeah. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And we know that when we can do things, it makes us a little bit more um, 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 happy inside and, and you know we know that we can achieve things and we feel a bit more, mm, what is the word? Um Confident? Proactive and confident, yeah. 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 And able to socialise. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm. And when you start feeling confident about yourself, your um, self-esteem rises as well. That's the word, self-esteem. It's, yeah. um, it's great, I think, to be able to uh, tick things. And, you know, as we're coming into the new year, it's, I know people laugh about making New Year's resolutions, but it is also a time to reflect on, on what happened last year and, um, you know, how we can make things better for ourselves in the next year. Uh, and I myself, as I'm getting older, really enjoy to have things on my calendar for the coming year to look forward to because I know that I have to keep working to save money to, to get to those places that I want to go. Um, but it also makes me feel like I've got things to do and places to be and um, you know a lot of the stuff that we do is around music, which I get really excited by. And <laughs> Yeah, so if you haven't made some New Year's resolutions, maybe one of those things might be to contact uh, Age Concern Wairarapara and uh, become a volunteer or um, join in in our groups and maybe, you know, the Buddy Up group might be something for you, which is fantastic. Yeah, just give us a call and um, whoever picks up, because we all have a, a chance of answering the phone, you never know who you're going to get when you ring our, our office. Um, and they can refer you straight on to the person that you might need to speak to. Yep. That can help out. I like what you said about um, pockets of hope. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the same. You know, people will used to say in the past, we um, have wells that we cover over. When we're younger, we develop wells or make wells, or we should make wells. Mm. Um, and I, I do the same. Like throughout the year, I have little pockets where I um, plant things. And go, then I know. <laughs> Money tree? <laughs> <laughs> well, well. so when I got back from um, Perth, was on a Sunday, uh, not Sunday, just gone Sunday previous, and it was wet. It was wet when we flew into Wellington. It was shocking. It was 15 degrees. I come from 38 degrees to 15 degrees. So Monday, the next day, I went into the uh, flight centre here in Masterton and booked me a trip to Rarotonga. <laughs> 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 but um, again, um, that's coming up in August, so I've got something to look forward to mm. in August. And then um, throughout the year, yeah, I've got trips planned for um, going to uh, see some of my children, um, my girl in Nelson, my boy in Auckland. And so there are po pockets of hope for me, you know, pockets of sunshine uh, that I can look forward to. Otherwise, if I didn't have anything to look forward to, um, I'll just carry on trudging along day after day with no real uh, expectation of um, hope really mm. and so um, yeah if you have pockets of hope plant them and then when you get to them when they start um, it's well, time to harvest them yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it feels it's a great feeling mm. yeah so cool so and as Susan said buddy up Rachel Ingham she is the coordinator for that and uh, 0600 Oh, no, it ain't. It's 06-377-0066. Uh, and uh, the next service that we have at um, Age Concern is our exercise classes. When do they run, Susan? Yeah, um, so we do have a magazine, obviously, and now that we've got our website, everything's on the website. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Steady As You Go running from Featherston on a Monday at 9.30. Uh, that's also, it's, I guess, a, a lighter fitness um, class. I think you need to have uh, some clearance from your GP to say that you're okay to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's exercise virtually from a chair and using hand weights, which, um, as I think I've said before, Anthony and I experienced when we first started, just to see what was, you know, what actually involved. And it was actually... Um, quite interesting. Uh, there's a, um, also, you know, it's quite good to do things with other people because you feel like you've, um, you know, you can see what other people are doing as well. Mm. If you start off on, on this program, you just, the, I guess the, the encouragement is around just doing what you can do at the time and you don't have to over-excel yourself, but to go along and, and just um, see how you go with that. Yeah. So yeah, just light hand weights, it's $2 a class. Uh, the Masterton one runs on a Monday and a Thursday. The Monday is 1.30, the Thursday is 9.30, so it sort of catches the afternoon exercises and the morning exercises. Um, and that's at the Senior Citizens Hall in Cole Street. 
and there's also one in Cardishan running at 1.30 um, on a Wednesday. And then there's also Keep Fit, which is a little bit more um, exercise, probably a bit of a higher place than the Steady As You Go. Steady As You Go is an ACC approved uh, exercise course, so it, it is uh, you know to prevent falls and stuff like that, because mm. I know even myself you get a bit bit more wobblier as you get older or um, yeah so the steady as you go one's really good for those sorts yeah. of because that was developed at out of the university or, or the school of medicine in Otago wasn't it I think so yeah yeah it mm. was and it, it was um, primarily started up to help um, those with balance issues as we get older we do have balance issues mm. and they found that there was a lot of older people falling over mm. and unsteady on their feet and steady as you go yep. and so that's uh, about uh, for prevention, yep, yeah, so and strengthening. Mm. It's and it's a really good class. It's a really good class. As Susan said, her and I went for it, and it goes for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we weren't expecting what we did, but you go at your own pace, yeah. and you go at your own level. You're not there to race anyone or that competitive streak that we have inside us, or some of us like like you, Anthony. <laughs> Me, no competition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so yeah, so the other one is is a, a keep fit class that's run in um, Masterton on a Monday at nine thirty and Thursday at ten thirty. Uh, the the Masterton ones are all run from the senior citizens hall, which is down the bottom of Cole Street. Some people might go to other um, social gatherings there because I know they have um, other things that run from there as well. So they're two dollars a class, and um, yeah, we do line dancing, which is fabulous. We quite often have. Um, Rachel giving us a bit of a demo on what she's doing with line dancing. Uh, that is run at the Senior Citizens Hall as well in Masterton at 10.30 uh, on a Monday. So lots of things going on and um, yeah, I guess at any stage if you're interested in doing some fitness, um, give us a call and we can refer you on or if you're able to get online. and um, Or even rock on up. Yeah, rock on up. Rock on up to the venue, uh, introduce yourself, or just mm -hmm. have a look to see if it's it's something that you might want to do. Yeah, because sometimes we're a little bit shy and yeah, yeah, we don't want to overexcel ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you are shy and would like someone to go with you, I'm sure um, Rachel or someone else would be more than willing to uh, walk alongside you mm. and slowly help you into that class. Yeah, so, yeah, as we said, you know, for us, mobility is essential. Um, as we go older, we seem to become less mobile, but we know when we become less mobile, um, it's not good for our body. Mm. And so the more um, activity we can do, and we don't mean, and I don't mean strenuous activity, you know, just for a little walk to the end of the street, we can start off like that mm. and go on walking groups. Yeah, and I think so. Maybe the walking group is something that um, Rachel's running already, so that could be another thing that you might want to do. Mm. Um, because, yeah. of course, we know these all different levels of walking. I sometimes yes. see people just meandering along the road, which is great, just getting out and mm. enjoying the day and waving to your neighbour or whatever. Yeah. And also what it does, um, just walking, um, and I read this on an article, it was around walking on a treadmill in the gym mm. um, to walking outside in the um, fresh air. One of the um, one of the findings was that when you walk in the gym on a treadmill, your mind doesn't really become active. It becomes inactive because you you're not you're looking at the same thing all the time. Mm, you zone out a little bit. You eh? zone out. Mm. Mm. Uh, but when you're walking outside, you see all different things happening, and your mind and your eyes are moving from place to place, looking at things, mm. uh, which again uh, helps your cognition. Yeah. Because it's keep on firing. I think. Um one of the bad things about our younger generation is that they spend so much time looking at YouTube and things like that on their phones. They're sitting down. I don't know how they, you know, what they're going to look like in forty, fifty years' time because they don't seem to get out and and do things. It's um, a a big issue, I think, at home for us. Like the other, uh, last night, we had um, some some tea, and you know, the barbecue is cooking, and everyone's sitting around on their phones, and I'm like. Mm. 
What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Let's have some conversation and um, or play with a dog or something like that. It's yeah. it's amazing, and I know um, young people like to you know have a little bit of downtime. But yeah, uh, I always say you know why are you watching other people's lives going past and all their exciting things that they're doing? Why aren't you out doing that yourselves and creating your own memories? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's it's just a little bit of a worry that um, this stagnant part of watching stuff online just really irritates me, <laughs> especially when I'm running around doing all the housework. What am I coming up? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I understand that. I understand that. We had a time on the weekend because I've got my daughter up from um, Nelson. And um, my grandchildren were around, so we had a game of t-ball out in the um, no, backyard. Fun. Yeah, yeah. And so my four-year-old, um, of course, she was batting, and so uh, she smashed the ball as hard as she could, and then we just threw the ball to each other. And again, you know, she learned how to hit, eye-hand coordination. Mm. She learned, or was learning how to throw better. You know, would say to her, step and throw, Baba, step and throw, opposite leg. And with that, her movement, and also mine, and because I haven't thrown properly for a long time, you know, just little catches or whatever. Um, but that movement, mm. you know, limber yourself up. Mm. And so, yeah, yeah, well, it was great. So get out there. It's sunny. You know, let's get outside and Have do stuff. Fun. Have some fun. Mm. Yeah, with, with other people, with members of your family. Mm. Yeah, with members of your family. Go picking or... You go picking fruit, that's what I used to like doing. Mm. Yeah. And then making like my grandson on um, Saturday. Because uh, I got back from uh, Aussie and my garden was a bit of a mess. So come on, boy. Let's go and cut some rhubarb. And make some rhubarb crumble. And <laughs> he loved it, you know. Mm. And, and teaching him new skills. Um and that's really good for a, a younger person, or mm. I think so. Because a lot of young people probably don't even know what rhubarb is, but, you know, yeah. we were sort of brought up on rhubarb and gooseberries, I remember. <laughs> gooseberry pie, go gooseberry this, gooseberry that, I think. Relishes and all those sorts of things. Ex absolutely, but, yeah. yeah. So I've been living at I mean, living outside and doing those things is a huge uh, form of education, isn't it? Where, it is. You know, young people today aren't probably getting that hands-on yeah. Um, life experience, really. Well, one of the funny things he said was, Coco, shouldn't we put apples in this? Isn't it meant to be rhubarbs and apples and blackberries? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can put those in. We just go to get some. My apples aren't ready yet. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, if they don't know, they'll just expect it out of either, I need to go to the supermarket to get this, or I need to go to a restaurant to have something like this. Mm. I mean, you don't need to if you if you know how to how to do it, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was exercise classes. What about social outings? Yeah, social outings. Let me see. Trips. In February, uh, we are going to Days Bay in Wellington, which is very cool. I remember going there just recently, and there's so even the drive to Days Bay is really exciting. Any, anything along a beachfront for me is like, wow, this is cool. You know, there's different little bays and stuff, obviously, um, around that area too. And I love what, looking at people's amazingly expensive houses that they have along there. It's, oh. You know, you've got the, the waterfront on one side and beautiful um, houses on the other. And Where is this? Is it in Wellington, Eastbourne? It's, um, isn't it around the coast of uh, Wellington, on the way to Wellington, Days Bay? I'm hoping that might be where I went. But um, I think you can get to Days Bay through, um, like there's a little ferry that goes across too, isn't it? I'm way. not sure. I've never been to Days Bay. Hmm. Perhaps I should go on that outing. Yeah, so that's Wednesday the 22nd. It's $45 and at least all of our um, trips leave from Age Concern at 9 o'clock. So please, if you're doing that, um, give us a call because they have um, a booking sheet and it's really important on the day to get there really early um, just to have a little bit of a chat with those other people that are going on the trip but also to make sure that you get um, the front seat or the back seat. <clears throat> I know when I was at college we always wanted the back seat because that's where all the naughty people were. <laughs> 
So, but um, yeah, so in March, um, the trip is going, is Worship in the Wilderness, part two. So there's been a part one at some stage. And that's on Wednesday, the 29th of March. Again, $45. I'm not actually quite sure what that's all about, but that sounds really exciting. Uh, and in April, Pukaha National Wildlife Centre, which I haven't been to, I think, for years. Really? Yeah, so that's, that's right amazing. on our doorstep. So if you're interested in doing any one of those trips, give us a call and find out exactly what's happening. Mm. Um, you might have to take your own kai to some of these. Um, which is which is good because um, yeah I like having a little packed lunch. You can have a bit of a munch on the on the bus and <laughs> share some some kai with with your neighbour. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they're great great for socialising and great just to get out of um, the wider upper and have a look at and see what's happening on the other side of the hill or as I say at Pukaha. Yeah, Pukaha, uh, I I go there regularly oh. uh, to Pukaha. Yeah, yeah, because my grandson and granddaughter they love it there, so they always, they always say, "Can we go this weekend?" Sure. Mm. And um, for those who live in the Wadarapa, uh it is subsidised. Oh, is it? Yep. Oh, it is. That. Yeah, yeah, it is subsidised. So you just have to, um, well, show them a form of ID that you live in the Wadarapa. Mm. Yeah, I just show them my um, library card. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, and half price, and it's amazing there. Absolutely amazing. Trying to get the, the amount of um, kaka there has increased so much. You'll be walking along the path, and then all you hear is this, and these uh, kaka come flying past you. Ooh. Yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> you sure have to dodge. Have you hit one lane on your shoulder? Like no, 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 I haven't. But you know, I've walked through some places, and then I just looked up, and in the trees just in front, uh, beside me, there's five or six kaka just. Sitting there. Wow. Because yeah. they're quite, um, they look quite plain coloured, but they've got beautiful um, feathers, haven't they? The inside of the feathers yeah. are... Orange? Orange. Stunning. Yeah. It, is, it is. They are stunning. They are parrots. Mm. They're native parrots. Mm. Uh, they are stunning. And the, the birds is quite interesting. The birds uh, from Bukaha, the kaka I'm talking about, uh, they do have a corridor that they fly from here to Wellington. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And it's not an... Um, not uncommon for them to fly to um, the gardens in in Wellington. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And so... So you could be saying hello to Wankaka in uh, Pukaka. <laughs> Pukaka. And then going down to Wellington and seeing the same one in, in the, the gardens. Same one. Yeah, yeah. What are the gardens called um, in Wellington? Um, yeah, I don't know what they're called. <clears throat> they're up on the Hawaii. And yeah, that's a yeah. cool place to visit as well. Yeah, and that's... Yeah, okay. and the reason why they found out is, is because of the tags. Mm. Yeah, on them. So there is a corridor. Because yeah, they're quite a big fair, aren't they? Quite heavy. They are. They're beautiful birds. Mm. Absolutely beautiful bird. And so it's they're beautiful to see. And there's also, um, and there there's there's a lot of tui there at the moment. There's because there's like a swamp type area which a lot of flax, uh, which the tui oh. love. Yeah, a lot of tui there at the moment. Tons of eels, and those eels are huge. Mm. And also trout. Um, in there, it's great. There's a wetter, um, a wetter city. Oh, that'd be a bit creepy. Because <laughs> you can have, they don't bite, do they, wetters? No, well, they've got them uh, wetter hotels. In the trees, <laughs> you open up a box, and there's, you'll find wetters in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, really, really cool. Mm. And then you've got um, a kōkako. Uh, she's in there. She's She sounds beautiful. And all the boots are and they are beautiful. Mm. And the nocturnal house, um, there are films in there running all the time. Oh, yeah. About not only about um, the the Kiwis themselves, but other th other projects that they've mm. had in there. And I didn't realise how many. I think there's about sixty five couples of Kiwis wow. in the Mount um, Bruce area. Crazy! I didn't realise there were that many, and because you can become a, <clears throat> excuse me, life member, can't you? You can. And um, have, is that free membership or something? Or every time you go, you get a, more of a discount or something. Mm. <clears throat> and they also have programs of their um, educational programs uh, for uh, Tamariki. Mm. Yeah, Rangatahi. Yeah, great, great investment um, into your family just to know about the area and the wildlife that are there.
Yeah, so if you haven't been to Puka, huh, that's a good opportunity to go and have a nosy. Yeah. Mm, and then you know where to take the, the grandkids. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I would, I would, you know, I would really say, you know, go and have a look at what the resources that we have at our own um, back door. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's lots of, um, isn't there a model um, railway? Um, oh, yes, on, on the, the way to. It's on the other side of that as well. There is, yeah. on this side, the Marsden side. Yes, yeah. yeah. There is. So there's, um, yeah, lots to think, not, lots to see. And when you go on these trips, you can see other things that you might, you know, might be able to um, suggest to Ginny, yep. um, you know, that you might like to have a look at and see if other people want to do that. And then they can create a, chip, a trip around what's, um, what's popular, so... Mm. Yes. Very good. Uh, and also, with as you said, um, Susan, uh, uh, if you've got some ideas of places that you might like to visit, talk to Ginny. Mm. You know, mention it to her, give her some ideas and all that kind of stuff so that, okay, we're, we're catering for what you want instead of what we think you want. Mm, yeah. So that's the best way. And it brings us to coffee mornings. Yeah, so coffee mornings are in Martinborough, Masterton, Carterton and Featherston. Martinborough is the first Wednesday of the month at St Andrew's Angl Anglican Church at the moment. Um, that's in Dublin Street at 10 o'clock. Masterton is at the Masterton Club, which is in Chapel Street at 10 o'clock every second Tuesday. Carterton is every third Wednesday of the month at the Baptist Church um, at 10 a.m. and Featherston the same, actually 10.30 uh, 10 in Featherston the second Wednesday of the month. Um, at the Featherston Community Centre. So uh, I guess if you're mobile, you could just about do <laughs> do the whole do the whole lot. <laughs> you could actually. Yeah, but um, yeah, and meet there are, different people. Yeah, so um, that's a great uh, chance to catch up with um, friends if you've got friends that go to those um, things and have a bit of a, a chat, uh, and also maybe. I think sometimes they have a guest speaker. It might be something that you um, can have another chat with Ginny about if you want something different happening at those coffee mornings. I know that um, it's nice to sit down and have some uh, kai and a, and a coffee uh, and also just chatting with other people um, and doing maybe some activities. might be those sorts of things that are coming up for coffee mornings, so that's exciting as well. Mm, that's right. And if you would like to learn about something, because we do have speakers, mm. Uh, guest speakers come in um, and so if there's some topics that you might like to learn about or hear about mm. talk or you might have something that you want to, to introduce yeah, that's yeah right. which is really exciting yeah yeah so take that opportunity <laughs> ring up <laughs> Jenny. take a leap of faith <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it's all about you know getting involved and um, and as as we say, you know, if you're a little bit shy about things, sometimes uh, doing things that maybe feel a little bit awkward make you feel so much better about yourself and um, yeah, makes you feel younger, I think. Well, yeah, yeah. As as the um, name of the program, aging with attitude. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what's interesting to me is that when we go back in history, the older people were very active. Mm. Yeah, and then it got through a stage, it seems like it was cycling, mm -hmm. that they become, well, society had a lot to do with it in terms of saying, well, you know, you're old now, you just sit down and do nothing. Mm. Uh, Where well, that's not really the case. No, yeah. and, um, you know, we quite often go, oh, you know, oh, it's, it's, I know when my mum comes, I used to be like, oh, I'll make you a cup of tea, or well, would you like something to eat, or what would you like to do? Um, but realistically, it's like now it's sort of like mum comes in the door and I go, right, mum, you know, help yourself to something, make yourself a cup of tea, you know, and trying to get out and do things, not just, um, yeah, just encouraging and, and keeping people independent, which is a huge thing about mm. our self-esteem as well. Yeah. If we find as we're getting older or at any age when people are doing a lot of stuff for you, you start feeling like the third wheel or you know, that you're not actually achieving anything, it's really important to, um, yeah, keep um, motivated and for us to motivate um, mm. our friends and family, it's always good to 
Yeah, get them to actually do things for themselves yeah. as well. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a terrible mother. I'm a th I molly coddle my kids, and I've decided that that's possibly something that falls back on me as I've got older because I end up still picking, picking up after them. <laughs> so please, you know, if you're doing that for another person, make sure that um, it's actually to their advantage that they learn to look after themselves and also mm -hmm. to do things for themselves as mm. well. Mm. So if you are uh, Susan's children, mm. and you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take heed of what you want to say. I don't know. I think as if you have conversations with other women, we all do the same. Um, so I think the mothering thing is fantastic. It's lovely to be a mum, but... Sometimes you just have to hand on the banner. Yeah. Uh, to At the those apron strings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's life. Yeah. Mm. Put your big shoe, boy shoes on. Yep. Or your big ladies' pants on mm. and do the thing that you're supposed to do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Time for showing them the way is it, um, when they're at school and stuff, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yep. When they leave. Yeah. Mm. See you later. Enjoy yourself. Mm. Be careful. <laughs> Make sure you've got a hanky <laughs> <laughs> and a bottle of water. <laughs> okay. And so some of the other things we have, and we'll go back to your uh, forte, Susan. My forte. Elder abuse. Yeah, elder abuse. So. Yeah, I guess um, we get a lot of referrals for people um, that there may be um, some form of abuse happening um, and they either, sometimes we have people ringing up and letting us know what's going on. We're trying to get out into our community and educate people about what elder abuse is mm. all about mm. and realistically it's um, taking advantage of someone um, and it could a lot of, I guess, um, for me, financial abuse is, is, is a big thing and it's so easy to fall into that if you're caring for someone because quite often we do those things like pop out with the the card and get um, you know our loved ones some groceries or something like that and then, oh, actually I, I needed some milk at home, I haven't brought my wallet with me um, and getting milk on, on mum or dad's uh, um, card as well. And so those little things, you know, you've really got to remind yourself that um, make sure you pay them back or when you go and get your groceries get them a bottle of milk or something on mm. your on your card mm. um, but your yeah, financial abuse and um, you know moving into someone's home um, because or mum and dad's home they're on their own and you might think that you're helping them out but uh, you actually are not paying anything towards the the rates or the mortgage or the rent if someone's still renting at, at that point um, yeah it's those little subtle things that we don't always think of as financial abuse. Yeah, I was uh, having lunch yesterday with some of my cousins and one of them said to me, what do you do, cuz? And I said, oh, I investigate elder abuse. And she said, tell what do you mean? I said, well, sometimes people don't realise that that's what's happening. Said, what do you mean? So I said, to her, well, you know, it could be that you have whānau staying at your home and uh, they don't contribute to the running of the house. And she, is that elder abuse? And I went, <laughs> yeah. yeah, financial uh, abuse, that's what it is. Mm. She went, well, then I'm getting abused. You should come and see me on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, just, they're just my kids, so I just look after them. But I said, well, you know, they are 30 and 40 years old. Mm. So why can't they contribute to, you know, and you don't work. Mm. Yeah. And so she went, oh, well. I'm making an appointment to see you. Yeah. The funny thing is that, you know, people were like at that age or whatever, um, it's just about us popping in and seeing them. You know, we are, we do work with people with their consent, so that's pretty important because mm. we don't want to push our way in. Um, but uh, just having a chat with that older person and just saying, hey, because they'd be going, oh, I didn't, yeah, actually that is what's happening. Um, and maybe they just need to, um, you know, just giving them the... Um, the power to actually control that themselves and they might be able to do that on their own and just have a conversation with mm. with Fano about that but um, yeah it's all about empowering people uh, to identify what what is going on for them and, and how we can help with that mm. which is you know can be quite um, a rewarding job as well. So what type of abuses are there? Well there's physical abuse a lot of um, you know elder abuse is just another form 
or in, um, of family violence, isn't it? There's mm. the physical abuse that you know we might see in, in bruising um, or people that um, are unwell. Um, there's also psychological, which I think is the most is the strongest um, abuse that can be really well hidden because we don't always hear what conversations happen at home. Um, you know, that's using put downs or making fe people feel useless or moving into their home and actually, oh, I don't know, I don't like what 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 you're cooking for tea or you know, don't like the kai that you're providing. Um, we'll just start doing our own food and you eat what we want and. You know, we'll put you in the spare room and, oh, we don't like what you watch on TV. We'll pop a TV in your room and you end up pushing that poor person. Into you know, the one room. Yeah, which is hugely isolating. And, um, yeah. you know, and we don't see what goes on with that. So um, that's the most powerful because we, we don't know what's happening. But, mm. you know, as people that know someone that's an older person, um, especially, I think, with neighbours and stuff like that, you know, sometimes we do get to know our neighbours quite well. Uh, and if they're an older person, I think socially, um, you know, in society we do, it's a responsibility to, to look out for those people, whether they're old or young, but, you know, yeah. if they're older, they're probably more vulnerable. Um, and just, you know, sometimes you might hear conversations across the fence, you know, yeah. where someone's having a, having a go at someone and, yeah. um, you know, popping over and supporting them or, or whatever. Mm. So yeah, if you have something that you might want to ask or a run bias that you might think might be going on for an older person that you're concerned about, just give us a call. Yep. Um, yeah. What's that number again? Uh, 06 377 0066. 06 377 0066. Yeah, we do have uh, cell phone numbers, but it's great if you ring that number, um, they can pop you through to, to us. Mm. Or, there is an or to this, um, our email address, mine, is e a n p at a c w w dot n z that's e a n p at a c w w dot n z or or um ears for me taringas <laughs> but it's e a r s at a c w w w dot org uh, dot n z dot n z yeah yeah I don't send myself many emails. <laughs> yeah, so that's a e -S -E -A -R -S at acww.nz. So that's two ways that you can contact us or the, another way that you could is through the web page. Mm. Yeah, so um, yes. look, there is a contact uh, details there to contact us. Just click on the tab and um, fill in your details and someone will get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. And that goes for each of our services too. Um, you can go to our webpage and go to um, contact us and it'll take you through to that page and fill in your details and uh, email it to us. You know, the, we want to be as accessible as possible to our community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you might see us out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Um, because we do have um, Elder Abuse Week coming up in June. It's a wee way away, but we know that this year is going to fly by um, and hopefully we'll be able to get some things underway for that week mm -hmm. um, around education. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. And people remember this weekend is a long weekend? Yes. Wellington anniversary? Mm hmm. So, um, but keep safe in that, whether you're driving away or uh, on holiday or if you're staying home and you've got things planned. Um, if it's fine, as I said, slip, slop, slap, wrap. If you're doing gardening or outside activities, go to the beach, whatever. And hydrate. And hydrate. That's so with important. Water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best with water. Any last words, Susie? Um, no, but um, I hope everyone had a, had a great festive season and, um, yeah, try and... Give us a call if you're needing to get involved with Age Concern and look after yourselves. And maybe if you haven't, make some plans for the year because um, it's good to have uh, something in your, what did you call it? Pockets of hope. Yeah, little pockets of hope over the, the next 12 months. Yeah. You yeah. could call them pockets of sunshine. Yeah. 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 Maybe becoming a volunteer or uh, something that is getting you out and about socialising. Mm. We are human and we need to socialise. <laughs> we do so. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to our audience, thank you so much for tuning in to um, Age, 
AD with Attitude at uh, Arrow FM 92.7. Again, thank you to Gordon Toy of... Um, oh, I forgot what the name of the organisation was. In Ma Matua. Uh, anyway, um, he's in Mapua. Mapua. Yeah, yeah. And so, our oh, House of Natives. Uh, that's what it's called. That's where he works out of. So, shout out to him and thank you so much for this beautiful taonga. Um, Ukaipo. And our next time, we're going to have a guest speaker from Wellington, uh, Men Surviving Sexual Abuse. That should be an interesting or um, that one. So, that's on the third Wednesday of February. So until then, keep well, look after each other, and stay safe. Eko Nida. Matiwa.